Hello, this is Jay Goldstein of the Local and State History Department at the Cumberland County Public Library. As a part of this multi-part series, we will be meeting with Paul Peoples of the United States Marine Corps Historical Company to discuss Lieutenant General John Archer Lejeune and the United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Good afternoon, Paul Peoples of the United States uh, Marine Corps Historical Company from the North Carolina Veterans Park in downtown Fayetteville, North Carolina. The park's reflective pool is behind me and these presentations will reflect on Marine Lieutenant General John Archer Lejeune and the Marine Corps of his era. The Marine Corps base in southeastern North Carolina is named in his honor. This presentation will explain some of the, the background of why this base is named in his honor. Also here in the Veterans Park, there's a very relevant uh, quote. The courage of a life is often less dramatic spectacle than the courage of a final moment but it is no less a magnificent mixture of triumph and tragedy. Before we go any further with this presentation, we'd like to go into some relevant military terminology. The term core has more than one meaning. The core can mean the body of an organization such as the United States Military Academy at West Point's Corps of Cadets. It can also mean a specialized organization such as the United States Army Corps of Engineers and the United States Marine Corps. Third definition, it's a tactical military term. Corps is made up of two or more divisions. A division is made up of two or more brigades. A brigade is made of two or more regiments. A regiment is made of two or more battalions. A battalion is made of two or more companies. And a company is made of two or more platoons. And a platoon is made up of two or more sections and or squads. This is relevant for this presentation as we'll be talking about some of the different units that Lejeune commanded during his Marine Corps career. After the Civil War in 1866, the United States Congress convenes a committee to actually look into abolishing the Marine Corps or merging it into the Army. Now, American military structure at this time, there is the Navy Department, which is composed of the United States Navy and the United States Marines. And then you have the War Department, which is essentially the United States Army. So there, there are two separate branches. The modern American Department of Defense doesn't come about until after World War II in the 20th century. So, this committee convenes its, and its findings in 1867 are that there's no reason to abolish the Corps. In fact, actually to strengthen and preserve it as a separate Corps within the Navy Department. The Marine Corps of the late 19th century, it will be downsized from about 3,000 to 2,000 Marines, and they will serve in the form of detachments on board U.S. naval vessels and shore detachments, which are generally called Marine barracks. A U.S. Navy base would have a Marine barracks as, as part of it. These sailors and Marines that would go abroad were America's 911 force during this period. Crises that would develop, they would be the ones that would respond to it. 
sailors and marines would land usually briefly to take care of various uh, crises and contingencies throughout the world. Another mission of the Marine Corps, these shore detachments would be put together into provisional units to deal with a specific situation. An example of this occurred in 1885. The Colombian province of Panama was in a state of revolution and civil war and two 400-man Marine battalions were put together to secure the United States owned railway across the Isthmus of Panama. The United States had, had a treaty with Colombia where they could maintain the, the railway and that's what they did. They went there until the situation was resolved and then they withdrew and those units were disbanded. Now, John Archer Lejeune is born in Point Coupe Parish, Louisiana in January of 1867. His father, Ovid Lejeune, was of French-Canadian ancestry. His family had come over from Brittany and France. They had gone to Nova Scotia and then after the British gained control of Canada and the French and Indian War. The Lejeune family moved down to the French colony of Louisiana. Lejeune's mother was of French Huguenot and Northern Irish descent. John Archer Lejeune would attend Louisiana State University in the early 18. 80s, he would obtain an appointment to the United States Military Academy at Annapolis in 1884. He can pass his entrance exams and then he along with all of his classmates would go through what they call the plebe summer on board a U.S. naval vessel, the sailing ship USS Constellation. Naval cadets of this era, they would start out learning how, how to be sailors actually on a sailing ship. So they spent the whole summer, that was their, their basic training and introduction to Navy life and then they would start their academic classes there at Annapolis. Lejeune will graduate from the U.S. Naval Academy in 1888 and he will serve as a midshipman on various naval vessels for the next two years. One of the highlights of this time is he serves on board the USS Vandalia. This was a, a ship that was sent to Samoa. There was a, a crisis brewing with, with Germany. Ships were, were getting sent there and in the midst of all this while they're in the harbor, uh, a typhoon otherwise known as a hurricane, comes in, wrecks the ship, the ship's captain, the commanding officer of the ship's marine detachment, and many of the ship's crew members perish in this storm. So Zern, he already had some active service under his belt when he is commissioned as a second lieutenant in the Marine Corps in 1890. He will be promoted to first lieutenant in 1892. Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to tune in in the coming weeks for more episodes of this series. Have a wonderful day.